clearly a valid doubt and which we did not cover in our course. Uh, why we cannot take ladder? So please explain. So uh, we can treat. So the answer to this is long lines as pi model uh, can be handled, can be considered in y bus. So here is a small example. So the example is like this, uh, consider uh, a small two bus system. Let's make it slightly complicated, three bus system. So I have, you know, with long lines, with pi model lines. So for those who are not aware, what is pi model? A transmission line can be modeled uh, as an inductor. What we have, what we are mentioning. So, for example, let's say I have a system like this. Now, this particular line connecting bus one with bus two, it is very long. For example, consider it as something like a 200 kilometers of even 400 kilometers for such a long line there will be a capacitance to the ground so that capacitance to the ground of the line can be shown like this so the total capacitance is uh, divided into two and then the capacitance value is shown like this so i'll just give you the values so let's say this reactance is uh, so here x equal to j 0.2 and for this here uh, it is denoted as b by 2 so b is the total charging susceptance of the line and it is uh, divided by 2 because on either side it is divided equally so b by 2 here uh, let's assume is something like minus j4 so this is just a value which will be given to you already in the admittance form or um, or more technically it is called susceptance form. So this side also it will be, so for example B is J8 minus J8 then you divide B by 2 on both sides uh, as minus J4 here. Similarly uh, this other one also think of it as a long transmission line whereas now reactance is now uh, 0 0.25 for example and then uh, this one, this is the charging susceptance of the, the second line connecting bus 2 and 3. So this is bus 3. Now here let's say it is J minus 2. So this is already B by 2 I am considering and this is also J minus 2. So these two will be equal. So these two trans, two long transmission lines, uh, uh, it, because it looks like a pi, it's called a pi model long transmission line. Now on the other hand, let's consider there is a uh, generator at bus 1 and this generator also has some uh, reactants. So this is the internal bus bar of the generator which we don't consider uh, for the time being. And so this is the generator and the reactance of the generator let's say is 8% or let's make it simpler 5%. So reactance is 5%. So actually, so that is nothing but x equal to j0.05 as you all know. Okay. So now for this network, I want to create, a, so at bus 2 there may be a load and at bus 3 also there may be a load. No other information is given. So considering all this, I want to form the virus. So very easy, we can just do that by observation. So what you do? admittances. So 1 by j0.05 will be minus j20 and here this will be y will be equal to minus j 1 by 0 0.2 will be 5 and 1 by 0 this one will be minus j4. So this is small y23 equal to and this is y12 equal to.
basically this this part will will become grounded to zero and then uh, this will act as a parallel current source so so therefore for our practical means i can consider this as ground and this is sub directly connected to bus one so by not an equivalent so i am not drawing so maybe i'll just roughly draw it so this is so this is bus one and this is the ground zero so this all is ground zero zero everywhere it is zero and this one this part i have just uh, say not an equivalent so now we have not an equivalent here so this is minus j20 so now what i want to do is y bus so how do you draw y bus for this so there are, as you know the bus is three buses are there one two and three therefore the size of the y bus will be three so this is a y bus so it will have uh, three rows and three columns let's call this 1 2 and 3 and this is 1 2 and 3 now i want to fill the uh, details inside so first look at our plus j5 between 2 and 3 there is minus j4 so it will become plus j4 sorry this is between 1 and 3 between 1 and 3 there is no direct connection so i just copy the these two elements here and this one is pertaining to second or third column so this will become j4 and here it will become j4 now coming to this element y11 you see at one this charging susceptance of this long transmission line j4 is adding to this one so j4 and j minus j4 and minus j20 are adding here so uh, what you what you will have is y11 equal to minus j5 which is addition of these two elements then minus j4 and then minus j so y22 there are two elements linking to the ground so it will become minus j4 and minus j2 so total will become minus j6 so this minus j6 plus of course we you have to reverse the sign and then 5 plus 4 is also there so that is uh, the sum of the row so 5 plus 4 is 9 so minus j5 minus j4 so all together will become minus j15 so that minus j15 will come here now similarly here the total sum is 4 and here minus j2 is there so it will become minus j6 so this is the complete y bus of a small example problem uh, considering uh, long transmission line okay so uh, the above is the example of a uh, three bus system with long transmission lines expressed as pi model so this is how you can express the pi model in long transmission line. so this is the response to the doubt which was asked in the question so any any doubts regarding this any doubts regarding this also i got a message in the chat window that uh, unable to view screen so is it is it okay now so is it okay now
So today what I want to do is after clearing this doubt, I would like to give you a little more details about the gauss seidel method of load flow. So what we'll look at is, uh, is how to handle voltage control buses. So that is something new that we we'll look at. So, but before that, let me do a quick review. So review of last lecture. So it is very important. So first one, what we did was uh, derivation of power flow equations. So what I'll do is very quickly, I'll once again uh, derive it. The purpose I'm doing this repeating is that I want all the students also to repeat it after you go home or finish your class. Uh, this, of paper and this was your standard. Uh, This is n rows n columns and this is n rows one column. So this is your uh, just uh, now what is the what is the next step to this? So I take the kth row. Take kth row. So if you take the kth row, you will have i k equal to summation of y kth row ith element and multiplied by v i where i is going from 1 to n. So basically this is a row matrix multiplied by column matrix. So if you know how to do matrix multiplication, so this will be y k1 into v1, y k2 into v2, y k3 into v3 and so on, we will add them. So that is why we get this. So this one we are calling as equation A. Now I also know what is IK. The net current injected at bus K is nothing but the complex power of bus K conjugate divided by voltage of bus K conjugate. So simple again, uh, this is a power is nothing but voltage into current. So I just keep the current on the side. So this is again SK and VK. But you should be very careful with the sign of SK. So if it is a load, then SK will be negative. If it is a generation, then SK will be positive because the current direction is considered as current flowing into the bus. So this is equation B. So now you equated these two equations, then what you got was something like this. So you got summation YKI VI i equal to 1 to n is equal to sk. So this sk I will write it as simply pk plus jqk with conjugate and divided by vk conjugate. Now what is the next step? So just by equating these two. By equating a and b. So repeat it. So what is the next step? So the next step is again very straightforward. I want to keep only one term here that is YKK into VK. And the remaining all terms I want to take it to the other side. So what I will get? I will get PK. So by the way this conjugate if I apply then it will become PK minus JQK divided by VK conjugate and then minus I will get same thing again summation i equal to 1 to n except i not equal to k. So only for that one element will not be there. So this will be y k i v n. So by the way what I am deriving is actually the gauss serial load flow. So this is gauss serial equations. So what you get here now, the idea was to eliminate i. So basically here we want to eliminate i. So, so if I eliminate i, I express everything in terms of y and p. So now here I am interested in knowing what is vk. So what is vk? So that is 1 by ykk multiplied by 
पी के माइनस जे क्यू के डिवाइडेड बाई वी के कॉन्जिगेट माइनस समेशन आई इक्वल टू वन टू एन आई नॉट इक्वल टू के वाई के आई वी आई सो हियर दिस इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर 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 दिस टू आर एनी वे टूगेदर इट्स अ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर एंड देन वी के इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर so by iterations i can find out v1 v2 v3 and so on like that so this is gauss seidel gs equation so already we did this last class just i am repeating it uh, and uh, why i am i also ask you people to do it so without see take a piece of paper uh, maybe after your lunch or somewhere just take a piece of paper and then write these equations then you will understand more clearly so try to do this two three times i just spent only two minutes writing this maybe two or three minutes but you can you can quickly write it in one or two minutes and you have to practice that four times five times like that because this is very very important uh, equation and you remember the same equation i entered into the matlab code and then we had a program for uh, gauss seidel loop flow okay so what was the other thing so the other thing that we derived last time was the power flow equations it also starts with the same so let's let's do that so again review power flow equations so it starts exactly in the same way so let me do that so what you have is i bus equal to y bus into v bus and then you take the i throw in this so we have i k equal to this is a complex number y k i summation of y k i v i so these two are complex numbers and then i equal to 1 to n now this is also equal to s k conjugate divided by v k conjugate so this is exactly same as we did before now what i want to do is take this v k on to the other side again i want to eliminate i but i want to write it in terms of p n p k and q k so this vk i take it to the other side so i have sk conjugate equal to vk conjugate multiplied by i equal to 1 to n yki vi so these are all complex numbers now since it's a common term i can take it inside so i get so this sk is pk plus jqk Whole conjugate. This one to n v k conjugate y k i v i. So these are all complex numbers. Now I want to uh, since there are uh, this is a complex equation. I want to separate real part and imaginary part. So what you do? So just this is a summation of three complex numbers. So three of them will have their also so let me write it in polar form so they will have angle so pk minus jqk so notice i implement the conjugate so it will be minus so this is nothing but i equal to 1 to n so i get vk magnitude and yki magnitude and vi when you multiply three Uh, this one you add their angles, but because there is a conjugate for VK, it will become minus delta K, and then plus theta KI plus delta I. So this is this is entire is a one magnitude and this is the angle. So so how to get the real part? Separating the real part and the imaginary part. So PK is the real part. So that is nothing but I equal to one to n. v k y k i v i just the magnitudes you will take so i'll just 
I'll just put the overall magnitude and then cos of this angle. So I'll write theta ki minus delta k, sorry, minus plus delta i minus delta k. So you can do it in any order. This is the active power equation. Now qk is equal to, there's a minus sign here, so I put minus here. And jj I will cancel on both sides. So i equal to 1 to n, vk, yki, and then vi, and then I will put a sign here. Delta ki minus delta i minus delta k. So this is, these two are again uh, very important. Power flow equations. Okay, so now uh, let's come. Any any doubts up to here? So I'll just wait one minute. If you have any doubts up to here, we are just repeating it again. I uh, give you as a homework. Just go to you know your home or your hostel or whatever. Just take out a piece of paper without seeing. Do these derivations. Derivation number one is at the top, and derivation number two is at the bottom. So these two you do it. It's, it's very uh, useful. Any doubts? So uh, the next part in the class, what we try to do is generate a randomly one problem and then we'll try to solve it. So this is the like the conclusion of this topic of Gauss-Seidel load flow. And later on, we will take up the newton raphson load flow. But then I want to conclude this topic by randomly generating one uh, system. So for this, uh, I request that I, I also, you also require to see me on the video screen. So not only the blackboard, also try to 